the last video we talked about rational numbers and the coordinate plane. And that's the reason why this thing, which is a coordinate plane, is on the board behind me. Now, as you know, this one's a little more fancy than in the last video. And I know that you are, you just can't keep, take your eyes at how amazingly straight these lines are. I know, but you gotta focus on me right here, right here. Look right here, okay? Put your attention away from that, okay? But uh, what this video is, is this is more of kind of used as an example for what we're gonna talk about in this video. This video is focusing on real world application of this, okay? Now, what do we use this for? Well, there's a lot of things. Now, you've used this before. Now, I know you're talking about, oh, well, I've used it before. I've used it for in math yesterday, dude. Okay, before that, before that. That, when you used it last, was in social studies, early in the year. Yeah, you used this. This, yeah, I'm talking about this. Yes, this, used it in social studies. Remember a little thing that we called latitude and longitude? Oh, yeah, kind of like this, isn't it? Yep. Just like in this coordinate plane, we have an x-axis and a y-axis. We have latitude, longitude. Coincidence? I think not. Okay? Now, just like on these coordinate planes, we are given an order pair, and you have to determine where on this coordinate plane you plot that point. Same thing with latitude and longitude. They give you a latitude and a longitude point as an ordered pair, and you do the same thing. Isn't that crazy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, in fact, this is the basis for modern GPS. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, coordinate plane, same thing as GPS, same thing as latitude and longitude, and that's how we use it. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, great, um, I have a phone that has a GPS on it. I don't need to know this. My phone does the work for me. Okay, good point. But also, if you are ever going to drive, ever going to drive, especially in a big city like St. Louis, New York, any large city, this is going to be helpful. And the reason why is because most cities, in fact, almost all cities in the United States are set up on a grid system just like this. Now, these lines, Probably, as I drop things on the floor and make loud noises, these lines would represent city streets and city blocks. Each one of these blocks would maybe have a couple buildings in them. And that's how cities are, are made. Now, we can thank our friends, the Harappans, in the Indus River Valley for coming up with this system, which we talked about before. Now, our system is based on that, but was made a little bit better by the Roman Empire. That's how our cities are made up, on that grid system that the Romans made better from the Indus River Valley civilization. Look at that, social studies again, what we talked about. Remember how the grid system was a lot better than, say, what the Mesopotamians were doing with building buildings right next to each other where they had to climb up on the roof to get to their houses and stuff like that, and the grid system was better? Same thing. Look at that. It's everywhere. It surrounds you everywhere. And I just wanted to point that out because, you know, a lot of times in math we think to ourselves, what are we doing this for? What's the point of this? Well, there's just two examples of how we use it in the real world. And you know what? Once you start driving, this is important for the city streets. And once you start driving, this GPS with Google Maps and directions and all of that stuff, that will be very important to you. And if it wasn't for this stuff, that stuff would not be possible.